We begin, however, with politics. All the Democrats took a break from Nevada today to grip and grin in California. Here's what it looked like today on the trail. John Edwards spoke to hundreds of supporters at a rally in Los Angeles and took some swipes at Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger while he was at it. In San Francisco, Barack Obama targeted women voters at a roundtable meeting focused on women's economic issues. Meantime, Hillary Clinton visited a church in Compton, California, promising help Thank to revitalize so the troubled, largely black city. The Republicans were all over South Carolina. John McCain gave a speech in Columbia, while Mike Huckabee stopped by Clemson University. McCain and Huckabee are in a virtual tie in the race. Rudy Giuliani, meantime, was, well, where else? Florida, stopping by a rally in Fort Walton Beach. Now, Giuliani may not think so, but South Carolina's Republican primary on Saturday is a key race, and it has been for decades. Since 1980, no candidate has won the Republican nomination without winning South Carolina. And just as it has in past years, the race in that state is getting dirty. Whispers and false stories about John McCain began to fly today. CNN show Johns is keeping them honest. John McCain walked into South Carolina knowing what he was in for. You know that a lot of nasty things are going on. Don't ignore that kind of stuff. South Carolina's got a lot of nasty things going on, which are pretty hard to ignore. Fake Christmas card attacks to remind voters Mitt Romney is a Mormon. False claims that Barack Obama is a Muslim extremist. Whispers about McCain's 1980 divorce. McCain's campaign was scuttled by this stuff eight years ago. The worst of it was a false rumor that he'd fathered an illegitimate black child. Now there are new insults. I showed him this recent cartoon attacking his record as a prisoner of war in Vietnam. It's not a stab in the gut to you a little no. bit? No, I'm just, just don't look and don't pay any attention. I've got to move on. i got my campaign to run. We're running a very strong, positive campaign. Negative campaigning is a tradition here. It's a dirty politics. It's wrong. And I, I think South Carolina's going to send a message. It's us versus them. Shame on you. We don't want your dirty style politics from Washington inside South Carolina. But don't buy the hype that South Carolina is the only state where this is going on. In fact, a Huckabee supporter says the organization he represents has made five million calls in many of the early primary states asking leading questions about Huckabee's opponents. This practice is generally known as push polling, a negative campaign technique. But the guys doing it say they're not push polling at all. They label it artificial intelligence calls and say it's a public service. We believe we are providing uh, very important information to the people of Iowa, New Hampshire, Michigan, Nevada, South Carolina. The Huckabee campaign says it has asked these guys to cut it out. Davis says he hasn't heard from Huckabee. The assumption about negative campaigning is that it works. But does it? Some of the people who used to do it aren't so sure anymore. I met with one former practitioner at the Lizard's Thicket restaurant in Columbia where some of the deals used to get done. Voters don't tend to like negative campaigns and if you can if you can point your finger and prove that this guy ran a negative campaign, uh, you, you can get votes. This time around, John McCain has a truth squad in South Carolina to fend off negative attacks. But now that he's fighting back, his political enemies claim he's playing the victim. Just another day in the wild, wild world of South Carolina politics. Joe John, CNN, Columbia, South Carolina. Eight years ago, John McCain had neither the staff or the money to respond to those kind of attacks in South Carolina. This time, as Joe said, he does. Joe talked more with the Arizona senator about how he's fighting back. Senator, um, there's a lot of talk right now about yeah. nasty politics yeah. in South Carolina. You're yeah. familiar with this. Sure. Um, when you look at what's coming at you, yeah. um, what goes through your head? How are you combating it? I see well, you put up a truth squad. Yeah. Yeah, we have... We have a true squad. We, uh, most of this is, interestingly, I'm told, is coming from outside of South Carolina. But look, uh, we campaign hard. We have people who uh, are responding to it, including my senior ranking officer in prison, who's a Congressional Medal of Honor winner, and I will we'll be fine. One of the things that's been said is now that you're responding to it, um, you're sort of playing the role of victim in South Carolina. Well, what do you say about that? I say, read the New York Times. Read the, listen, talk to the people that guy came up and said he had 11 co phone calls today attacking me on every aspect of my life and character. And that's, that's all I say. 
Well, if anyone knows the nuts and bolts of attack ads and dirty campaigning, it's Stephen Marks. He's a Republican political consultant and author of Confessions of a Political Hitman. In the past, he made a living, very good one, digging up dirt on Democratic candidates. The fancy name for it is oppositional research. Stephen, thanks for being with us. The, these thanks kind for of, having me in. How exactly does oppositional research work? I mean, you would be hired by a, what, a campaign or a special sometimes interest we're hired group by the campaign. Yeah, sometimes we're hired by the campaign directly, sometimes through special interest groups. Like on the right, you have the NRA and the Christian Coalition, and on the left, you have, you know, the pro-choice, um, you know, like Emily's List, and you have the trial lawyers. And, and so you, you just what? You go through old documents? You go through uh, endless files? I just want to also say, and of course, we have the five, these 527 independent groups, so quote unquote, independent groups now, and we go through um, all, all the courthouse records um, to see if there's any lawsuits, divorces, any DUIs, any any criminal activities, and of course, going through. If they're an elected official like John McCain, his voting record, which is where they've gotten a lot of this material from, is what are the examples from recent history that that have worked mm -hmm. the best? I mean, I, I guess what the the Willie Horton ads against Michael Dukakis. Yeah, that was brilliant because um, in just just from one issue, we went from uh, Bush went from 18 points behind to eight ahead. But even more recently, in the last election, of course, the Swift Boat ad uh, blunted Kerry's momentum and probably cost him the election. And in 2000, the real stealth issue that cost gore the election, I believe, was guns, if you remember, but a week before the election, Charlton Heston, the NRA, sent out a mailer in these states that Gore had no business losing, like West Virginia and Missouri and um, Arkansas and Tennessee. He ended up losing these states because those Democratic states, those people owned guns, and he got and uh, Gore supported the Brady Bill, and that really hurt. That really hurt Gore. As someone who who has made a livelihood out of this, I mean, do you feel? guilty about it? I mean, a, a lot of the stuff isn't true. I mean, a lot of these last minute things, they're just scurrilous. Anderson, no one would begrudge anybody for going to Carfax before they buy a used car to see the history of that car. You know, to see accidents, to see anything that's happened to it. If you're going to um, vote for somebody, how can you make an intelligent, educated vote if you don't have, know the background of that candidate? Now, you can say some of these attacks you know, maybe you don't care if it's relevant or not, like the Vietnam stuff and the stuff about McCain's wife or sec people's sex life, you don't care, but you still have the right to know. But, but, just, but if it's inaccurate, I mean, if you're saying things no, about no. his daughter that are completely not true. Well, you know, as far as us that do opposition research, we give whoever our client is accurate information. Now, it's true, the campaigns will sometimes skew that or put it out in a way that where it's slanted or where it's not completely accurate. Do you think this is uh, just the beginning in terms of this campaign, in terms of the, the opposition research we're seeing, kind of the negative information we're going to be hearing more about? Yeah, like I mentioned before, Iowa was totally positive. The attacks by Romney against Huckabee totally boomeranged. And then in New Hampshire, everything stayed clean. And Michigan, too. And as like I mentioned, now Hillary and Obama being real nice to each other. This was the first today. These hits against uh, McCain today were the first real, ne real, real negative and nasty stuff. And again, like I said, Huckabee, he's behind, he has to do it. So what's going to happen is whatever the next group of primaries comes, when it, you know, right before it, whoever's behind, if you're in a state of desperation, you have to go negative. If, you are, if you're five or seven points behind a day or two before the election, your numbers aren't going to go up. The only way you can win is by bringing the other person's numbers down. Uh, the book is Confessions of a Political Hitman. Uh, Stephen Marks, it's, it's fascinating. A lot of people don't talk about this. It's kind of a shadowy world. We appreciate you coming on talking about it. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you very much, Anderson. Well, there's a great dialogue on dirty politics right now on the 360 blog. You can check out my post on the subject and your feedback, the address, cnn.com slash 360. Still to come tonight, the case of the murder of Marine takes a dramatic turn. Allegations the wife of the suspect might know more than she's been letting on.